Hello everyone, this is Glenn Elliott, and today we're going to be learning how to edit in the new magnetic timeline. Apple completely reimagined the concepts and layout of the editing timeline. They've opted for what's considered a trackless timeline. There's a darker gray strip in the center of the timeline that's considered the primary storyline, and lighter uh, gray area above and below, which is the area where you can actually connect clips. Uh, the concept is you're going to utilize the, the primary storyline to flesh out the foundation of your story and then um, add supporting shots via connected clips above or below, which would be cutaways, B-roll, and music. This new timeline behavior is one of the major revolutionary changes in Final Cut Pro X. So it's no coincidence it also happens to be one of the areas people have the most trouble with when they're starting out, especially when they come from track-based NLEs like uh, Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro 7. At first, it can be difficult acclimating to the new timeline format. That's why I'm going to break it down and try to make it easier to understand and hopefully soften the learning curve. Now that I've grown accustomed to this new timeline style, I actually don't want to go back to the old style. I actually think that you're going to feel the same way once you get a chance to learn it. So let's get started. First and foremost, we have to learn how to get footage down to the timeline to begin editing. There's four major types of edits. There's the append edit, connect edit, insert edit, and overwrite edit. Apple did a good job of making this very intuitive because they're all left-hand keystrokes. First, we're going to talk about the append edit. So we're going to make a small selection. We're going to hit the E key on our keyboard for the append edit. That's going to drop it down to the timeline. As we make another selection and hit E again to append it again, you'll see it goes right to the end of that. So append basically will move a clip to the very end of your timeline on your primary storyline. So as we continue to make clips uh, selections here, so I'll make a selection um, in this clip, hit the E key again, you'll see it will go right to the end here. So we have three clips lined up. Um, the next type of edit is an insert edit, and that's where you want to insert a clip in between. You don't want it to overwrite any of the footage, you just want it to insert and push everything downstream to make room for it. So let's go ahead and make a small selection here. We'll move our cursor in between these two edit points and go ahead and hit the W key on the keyboard. And I think of it like this, um, an insert is a wedge, you're wedging the clip in. That's how I remember as W for insert edit. So right now I'm going to hit W and you'll see a clip just inserted. It's not probably not the best example because it's the same exact clip, but I'll grab another selection here. Uh, grab a smaller piece here and we'll go ahead and hit W and insert that. So you see it just inserts inside in between the two clips and pushes everything downstream, makes the edit longer. Um, the next edit is the overwrite edit. Um, that's the D key on your keyboard. So I, I think of it like this. The overwrite is gonna overwrite or delete any footage that it, it drops on top of. It's destructive, so it's D on your keyboard for overwrite. So I think of it as D, destruct, it just, you drop it right on top and it just, completely deletes anything underneath it. So we're gonna make a small selection here and just hit the D key and it drops right on top and just overwrites it. So those are the three edits concerning the primary storyline. There's one more edit left over and that's the connect edit. That's a little bit less um, intuitive in terms of its uh, keyboard shortcut. That's Q for, and it's, it's a connected clip. And that what that does is it connects a clip outside of the uh, primary storyline or on top of or below. So we're gonna go up and make a selection here move our cursor to where we want to connect the clip, hit the Q key to connect the clip, and you see it drops on top of the primary storyline. So now we're gonna delve into the storyline and see what we have here. Um, I'm not really building an edit here, as you can tell, it's pretty random shots, but I'm gonna show you how the timeline functions. So again, this gray center line is the primary storyline, and that's the area that is considered magnetic. As you can see, um, I grab the last clip and try to drag it out to create a gap, and it snaps right back, the same thing with this. So things kind of stay in their place and, and don't allow it to uh, kind of move or nudge around. So that can feel limiting at first. It feels like you're kind of wrestling with a jellyfish. You know, it's like you can't get it to move and go where you want it to go. Um, whereas the connected clips, they you can drag and move them around and they kind of stop and move and, and stay um, where where you move them, very similar to Final Cut Pro 7. Now there's, there's good reasoning why um, the pri why the primary storyline functions magnetically. It allows things to move and stay um, in sync. For example, if this was a cutaway to this shot and we needed it, but we needed this shot to move later in the timeline, but we still needed the B-roll to be associated with it. As you can see closely, there's a little stake that connects the connected clip down to this primary storyline clip. So I can grab this clip in the primary storyline and move it, and this connected clip will move with it. So I can move it down here and let go, and automatically it's gonna close the gap. 
So let's take a closer look at the way the magnetic primary storyline functions. As you saw earlier, you can't simply just drag and move a clip. It just kind of wants to stay in its own position. Now, if you click and drag and continue to move it out of its position, you see like a, a, a lighter blue bounding box area where it was. As you move it closer to an edit point, you'll see a blue line, blue vertical line on the edit point, and it allows you to shift it and actually physically move it to that area. This is actually very helpful because I can't tell you how many times in editing I'll have a sequence of shots and I'm not quite sure what order I want these shots in. And this is an easy way to just shuffle your, your shots around and try different sequences and a different order rather with um, various clips. It, it um, basically keeps everything in sync. It keeps everything lined up. You're, you're, you know, you're not overwriting or deleting anything, but it just allows you to uh, rearrange everything on the fly. It's, it's very effective and I use it constantly. The primary store line will not allow gaps at any time. You can delete a clip and it'll automatically close that gap. There is a way to delete a clip and leave a gap and you can hold down the shift key and hit delete. What it does is it deletes the clip and leaves a, a what's called a gap clip. In, in its place. So no matter what, there's no way to leave any empty space in between any things. It always seals it up with a gap clip. Even if we go up into our event browser here, choose a shot, move downstream past our last edit, and force a gap in there by say, oh, doing an overwrite edit, it'll overwrite in there, but that empty space between the last edit and where you overwrite it will be filled with a gap clip. So that's, that's an important attribute to understand about the magnetic timeline. It wants to fill every available spot at all times. Now there's gonna be a lot of instances where you're gonna to wanna to override the magnetic behavior of the primary storyline. Thus far, we've only worked with the normal edit tool or selection tool, which is A on the keyboard. It looks like just an arrow. There's another tool available. It's called the position tool, and that's P on your keyboard. And as you notice closely, there's a subtle difference between these two arrows. The position tool doesn't have the tail on, on the arrow. So as I toggle between the normal edit tool, or the selection tool rather, and hit P on the keyboard, you'll see the little tail disappear. So I'll go back to the selection tool, and then back to the position tool. Now the position tool differs from the selection tool in that once you grab a clip and move it, it is overriding the magnetic nature of the timeline, meaning that it will allow you to move things and let it stay wherever you move it. So if I drag this out and leave it, it just le it, it goes there and stays there. It doesn't um, you know, snap back. Uh, bear in mind, when you move things around, it will overwrite adjacent clips and it will leave gaps if you drag and, and create a gap there. Now going back to the normal selection tool, it also doubles as a ripple tool. Once you move, hover your cursor over an edit point, you'll see a bracket, either left bracket or right bracket, and that'll uh, determine which side of the edit point you're grabbing. So if it's, you know, the brackets to the right, it's, it's choosing the clip to the right, and you can actually see it once you click. Once you start to drag, you see it's, it's basically clipping off the beginning of this clip or making it longer. So it's um, a very effective way. You can go in and slug a bunch of clips down to your timeline and make a rough cut and then go in there and tweak it using this tool. It's very simple. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that with these uh, this selection of clips here. So we'll start off from the beginning here and hit play. Right away we see that first clip gets cut off really early. So right here it gets cut so we want to make this first shot longer. We're just going to click and drag it. So I'm not changing any tools. I'm just using the selection tool which is the A tool and just dragging it out and rippling it longer. And it's a ripple because right, this clip is not overriding the second clip. Um, it's basically making it longer and just lengthening the timeline. So it's rippling the timeline downstream. In Final Cut Pro 7, there was actually a RR tool. It's the ripple tool. And this automatically becomes a ripple tool when you hover it. That's what I think is one of the brilliant things about Final Cut Pro 10. It looks like it has a lot less tools, but these tools just work in a more efficient manner. So we're going to watch this again. I'll actually make that a little bit longer. Wait for it to settle down. We go to the next clip. Pans down. That's pretty good. This shot starts a little late. I'd rather start with it moving a little bit. So we'll just trim off the beginning of that. And it seems to cut a little bit fast. So I'm going to lengthen the other side of it. And that obviously needs to be trimmed back. So we'll just move it. So as you can see, I'm just clicking and dragging the clips and, and rippling the in and out points pretty easily. Now, uh, another thing to bear in mind is I have detail trimming feedback turned on. So when I click um, an edit point, I start to drag it. In the top there, you're gonna see two um, 
two windows and the window on the left is the clip to the left and the window on the right is the clip to the right. You see the clip to the left is not moving because we're rippling. We're not affecting the previous clip. We're only affecting the uh, in point of the uh, clip on the right. And likewise, if we grab um, the clip on the left and drag that, you see that. Now this, I don't believe this is on by default, so you can go ahead up into your preferences. And under the editing tab, there's show detail trimming feedback. If I toggle that off, and drag, it's only gonna show me the clip that I'm, I'm adjusting. Once I toggle it on, it's gonna show me the adjacent clip, which is, I feel should be by, by default, it should be like that. Now you can use the position tool to click and drag edit points. All it's gonna do is move the edit point and it's not going to ripple. So it's gonna leave a gap in its wake. Another very important tool to note is the trim tool, which is the T key on your keyboard. Once you hover the trim tool over an edit point, it becomes a roll tool and you can roll your edit point left or right. If you hover your cursor in the middle of a clip and click and drag, it becomes a slip edit. And if you do the same thing while holding down the option key, it becomes a slide edit. This is another great example of how these tools are a lot more efficient in Final Cut Pro 10. This is one tool that performs the functions of three separate tools in Final Cut Pro 7. So that's all I have for now. That was a basic introduction to the new magnetic primary storyline. Bear in mind this is only scratching the surface of what you can do in the new trackless timeline in Final Cut Pro 10. However, it's important to have a strong understanding of these behaviors. The better understanding you have now, the better foundation you'll be building as a new Final Cut Pro editor. I'm Glenn Elliott, and thanks for watching.